Millennials and Gen Z don't buy motorcycles. They've been overly sheltered by their helicopter parents, and as a result, ended up being afraid of everything, including our beloved two-wheeled freedom chariots. Motorcycling will die out because of these lily-livered whippersnappers. Soon, the grizzled boomer will be the only species of motorcyclist, or rather biker, left. The last of a dying breed, riding that two-wheeled and eventually three-wheeled freedom machine into the proverbial sunset as Steppenwolf plays Born to be Wild and Peter Fonda sheds a tear. Nonsense. According to the latest stats, the number of motorcyclists on North American roads is actually growing significantly, with millennial and women riders both on a steep rise, and Gen Z eyeing the two-wheeled lifestyle as a viable alternative to congested and claustrophobic public transit or the relatively expensive Uber. But now Honda has given us a simple alternative. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Music to my ears, but the best part, the price. Will this bike do for Honda what the C90 did in the 1960s? Stay tuned and subscribe if you so desire. So you're a student looking for reliable, cheap transportation, or a nervous beginner who doesn't want to mess with clutches and shifters, or a track rider who needs a pit bike, or a seasoned two-wheeler who doesn't want to commute on your GS or road glide through heavy city traffic, or an RVer looking to throw a bike on the back of the motorhome. Got 1807 bucks laying around? Well, Honda has you covered with the Navi. No, it ain't a Goldwing or an Africa Twin. It ain't built to carry you across the continent or to tear up a track day. This is a city bike pure and simple, and it doesn't get any purer or simpler. 110cc of air-cooled carbureted goodness. Yes, those are drum brakes front and rear. The bike weighs 236 pounds wet, so they're all you need. Inverted front forks, just like on the Panigale V4. Well, not just like, but they are inverted. Single shock, V-matic transmission so you can twist and go, 12 and 10 inch wheels for maneuverability and agile handling in city traffic, old school speedo, no iPads here, a 0.9 gallon fuel tank, 110 miles per gallon, yes, you heard that right, a handy storage box underneath the tank, and funky styling that'll appeal to the younger crowd. And a price that undercuts every bicycle I own. Hey, I like nice bikes. At $1,807, this could be the least expensive reliable motorcycle on the market. You can get a cheaper Chinese bike from Amazon, but don't expect it to last long. So what's the new Honda Navi like to ride? Well, Honda flew me and a bunch of other YouTubers down to Costa Mesa, California to find out. Hitting the twisties. <laughs> we get this up to a 50. Here we go. 50 miles an hour right there. We're actually doing the speed limit. Yeah, this is definitely a bike that feels fast when you're going slow. Gravel action. So what did I learn? The bike incorporates some of the same styling cues as the Grom, which incidentally is Honda's highest selling model, by a long shot. The design is funky and includes four stock collar options, the more high-vis grasshopper green and red, and the more subdued nut brown and ranger green. This thing is definitely styled like a motorcycle, not a scooter. The engine and transmission on this bike are the most scooter-like features about it. The CVT transmission can't be bump started, so Honda provided a kickstart in case the battery conks out. Piece of cake. The bike is twist and go, and the power is definitely on the soft side. Acceleration is... not for the impatient. The Navi does city speeds willingly enough and tops out at around 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour for those of the metric inclination. The power, while not exciting, is not going to catch out any new riders. Predictable is the name of the game here, but it's not nearly as quick as a Grom and in no way, shape or form should be taken on the freeway. Where the power band and delivery are scooter-like, the handling is all motorcycle. The seating position allows the rider to grip the tank with the knees and apply weight to the pegs to turn. 
The Navi zips around corners smartly, and while I would not want to test the limits of the relatively thin tires, the little Honda nimbly makes its way through city traffic. The suspension kept it composed on bumpy roads, and I didn't find potholes jarring. It's not as buttoned down as the Grom, but it handles better than any scooter. Seat height is 30.1 inches, and the seat is relatively narrow in the front. It felt low enough for most people. If you're 5 feet tall or less, it may seem high. Comfort-wise, this is the best mini bike I've ever ridden. The bars are wide, the foot pegs forward, there's plenty of legroom, the seating position is upright, and the general impression is that the bike feels much larger and roomier than it is. So, to sum up, what's there to like about the Navi? It's an extremely practical motorcycle with plenty of storage, a reliable engine, and maintenance-free shaft drive. Change the oil and hose it down once in a while and the Navi will get you around trouble-free for years. It is ridiculously easy to ride and you can jump on it as a complete noob and take off with little to no coaching and without all the stalling that comes with manual shifting. It may be the best value in motorcycling. My gripes with it? Only two, really. I'd like more power, but I'm a long-time motorcyclist who has ridden some seriously fast hardware. And the brakes. They're drum brakes front and rear, and let's just say that they require a firm hand if you want to stop quickly. Not a deal breaker, but you can definitely see where costs were cut to get that unbelievable price. There's a huge subculture around the mini moto lifestyle with rides, rallies, and many options available to pimp and customize your ride. The Navi will fit into this scene quite nicely and will provide an entry point for riders who are younger, financially limited, or intimidated by clutches and more powerful bikes. The more riders on the road, the better for all of us. More political influence and greater driver awareness are good for every motorcyclist. Safety and numbers and all that jazz. Honda seems to be pushing the mini moto angle hard with a plethora of models. You have the Ruckus and Metropolitan which are accessible to riders without a motorcycle license but are also considerably less powerful than the Navi. Then you've got the Grom, the Monkey, the Trail, the Super Cub and the PCX, all of which are more powerful. So where does the Navi fit in? It combines the styling and handling of a motorcycle and the ease of use of a scooter and will make a confident motorcyclist out of the most rank beginner. It is that easy to ride. And it's the least expensive of all of them. Yeah, complain about the carburetor, the drum brakes, the air-cooled motor, all you want. If you want more performance from your mini moto, get a Grom. But be prepared to fork over almost twice as much dough. By the by, while at the event, I got to take out every mini moto there for a quick rip around town and compare them back to back. So stay tuned to the channel for a mini moto shootout coming soon. In the meantime, the Navi is what it is. A stylish, practical runabout that will give you sticker shock. In a good way. It's a commuter, a shopping bike, it even has passenger pegs so you can take that special someone with you. And they'd better be special, cause it'll get cozy on that seat. So the verdict? This bike is perfect for the student, the commuter and the beginner. If you want freedom, it's pretty much the lowest priced option. It's an actual motorcycle and looks like one, no step throughs here. It's fast enough as long as you stay off the highway and in tight city traffic it'll outpace almost everything else by slipping through the gaps. So if you were ever hesitant about becoming a motorcyclist, if you found most bikes too intimidating and unapproachable, if you want the most bike for your buck, the Navi is your ride. If you want to spend more money on more mini moto than one of the others will probably tickle your fancy. So riding the Navi in sunny California was a treat, and in the afternoon we got some free time to take the bikes where we wanted. I chose to cruise down to Huntington Beach and park just off Main Street. As soon as I pulled up, a young guy approached me and asked if the bike I was riding was a Grom. I explained that this was Honda's new mini moto. Then I told him the price, and his eyes just about bugged out of his head. He couldn't believe it. Yup, I can definitely see the attraction of the Navi. An 18 year old me would have bought this bike and put 100k on it. It is easily financially accessible to a high school kid with a part time job and it provides the freedom to get around on your own terms. And isn't that what most teens dream of? It's the most beginner and wallet friendly real motorcycle on the market right now and again anything that gets more riders on the road is good for all of us. So is the mini moto life appealing to you? Or do you have someone else you want to teach to ride a motorcycle and are looking for the least intimidating option? Which bike would you take to the mini moto hooligan ride? Share your thoughts in the comments below and as always ride safe. Nice chopper dude. Hardtail Sportster, chain conversion, pretty sweet.
That is a serious bike. Complete with a rusty chain. Nice. That dude is legit AF. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel has paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.